Okay, so we're gonna revisit this video where we, um, well, I'll, I won't say we, I won't, I won't put that evil on Phil, although he condoned and shot the video as well. Um, we are going to see if we can't get this 1050 back to life because plenty of you guys were like, gee, it's probably not dead. You probably this and it's probably that. And it's probably, we're aware of all that stuff. And we're gonna see today if we can't get it back because I have a theory as to what happened. But before that, listen to this message from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Drop and the Sennheiser PC37X professional grade gaming headset. Sennheiser is known for their legendary sound quality and gaming headsets are known for their legendary suck quality, but now you can have the best of both worlds without compromising mic quality, making it the perfect choice for gamers and professionals alike. The detachable 10 foot cable and 3.5 millimeter plugs ensure maximum compatibility while running your own amplifiers without taking up an additional USB slot. To learn more about the Sennheiser PC37X from Drop, click the link in the description below. If you're not aware that I should mute my watch. If you haven't watched the first part of this video that we released on Halloween, uh, you should go and watch that first. You understand what happened and, well, okay, we doused it with water and Windex just to see how much it could take. Surprise, it took a lot of water to make this thing no longer boot. So if you wanna see how we reached the point of where we are today, then go and check that video out. But what we're gonna show you right now is that the system will output VGA, right here. See, so we just got a blue light. We're gonna go to the BIOS here in a sec. This monitor takes a minute to turn on. See, we've got video. So we know that this is outputting something, but the problem is every time we clean the driver off and we suit into boot mode, we boot into safe mode, we can DDU the driver, but the problem is as soon as we start to reinstall the driver, then the GPU goes corrupt, we get black screen, the fans go to 100%. So my theory here is not that we killed the graphics card. Because we showed in that video too, I know I keep telling you we did in that video, you should go watch it, honestly. But what we showed in that video is how we corrupted the driver. But getting it back by doing the driver wipe uh, with DDU in, in safe mode was no longer working. But my next theory here is that we corrupted the BIOS. Because seeing the screen go black and the fans go to 100% is very indicative too of a BIOS failure. So I think that is happening when we go to write to the, or write the driver, is it's communicating with the card and the BIOS is just borking. So that's my theory. The other thing I'm gonna do too, just to rule out BIOS in any way, cause someone did point out like, Jay, you realize you were dousing the motherboard too, right? Cause like that spray was going everywhere, all over the motherboard as well. Um, the motherboard held up, I think pretty well. So I'm gonna save this particular profile. And then what we're gonna do here is um, test bench OC. Okay, good. And save to profile one. Yes, we are gonna also reset optimize defaults and I'm just gonna see if we can boot. It's also been sitting now for like five days solid. So a lot of you were like, there's probably still water in here or there. Water could have gotten sucked in through the fans somehow and got to the other underside or got in the core or something. So a lot of you guys just were like, hey, do the thing where you let it dry out for a while. I didn't stick it in a bag of rice. It, the humidity has been like single digits here for the last week. So trust me when I say any moisture in there is wicked out now. So, oh, it's going right to repair, which is kind of funny. That's probably because of all the failed boots we had earlier. Windows is like, I remember what you did. <laughs> Pepperidge Farms remembers. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go right to restart my PC. I'm not gonna go straight to, to, uh, to safe mode yet because it will boot in safe mode because it just loads the basic VGA driver like you saw right there. But what you'll see here is it will go to the Windows um, little spinning wheel and then it'll just go black screen as soon as it tries to switch to desktop mode. Unless of course it just suddenly is working, which I'm kind of hoping isn't the case. Oh. <laughs> Shortest video ever. <laughs> what? what is okay, so this is the part where I was like, see, I told you it was still just wet. Now Phil saw later on that day, it was completely dry. I came out here multiple times trying to boot this system and it wouldn't boot. Well, right. dang it, I wanted to show you guys how to get back your BIOS. I mean, it's not like this card didn't go through hell or anything. Ah. <laughs> Jay is stupid and did stupid stuff. That's what happened here, but that's okay. I do the stupid stuff so you don't have to. At least that's the story I'm sticking to. So should I put the riser back on and the display port? All right, riser card and display port. Cause all that water was also going on the riser card. Oh, this is what we were experiencing. So it's one of those two things. 
If for some reason I take the riser card off and it's still doing it, then we try a different cable. If that doesn't work, then we can try the BIOS flash. Because the BIOS flash just sort of resets everything. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, let's say this is your card, and this is what you're experiencing. You got nothing to lose, right, to, by trying. All right, same thing without the riser card. So we know it's not the riser card. So this is the port I was on, the bottom port for display port. This particular card has two ports. So I'm gonna go to that one. Okay, this is a different port. So I think we killed the bottom port. That's all it was. Through all the comments that I read, I don't recall anyone pointing out like we probably killed the port. A lot of people were just telling me let it dry out, which is kind of the obvious thing. Uh, a lot of people were also telling me that um, probably corroded, but I highly doubt corrosion. I mean, corrosion can happen that quickly uh, in the perfect environment, but typically when you're dealing with things like with aluminum, aluminum, aluminum and all that, I have no idea what the, I guess with solder and stuff, there's, it, it wasn't corrosion, okay? I promise it wasn't corrosion. But look, it's back. So maybe we should just do a bio slash now to see if we can't get that port to come back. I don't think it's gonna help because we probably physically damaged the port. But I, I wanted to show you guys how to do a BIOS recovery, so maybe we'll just go ahead and do that. What do you say? 441.08. Let's just see if the driver install can at least complete, because that's not something it would do before. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> well, 441.08 installed. Um, we were gonna put it on that on that pegboard as a display piece, kind of like that X299 Dark is over there. It's all etched and nasty and gross because of all the overclocking and stuff we did on it and the Look at that, working perfectly fine. But that's the, that's the one that we had finally beat Steve with, and so it's got some sentimental value even though the board still works. We were gonna put this up there as the wall of hero, right? Because um, this thing was a trooper, and it died valiantly, and it, it went down with its colors flying. This is that soldier that you have that, that funeral for back home, and then he just walks in one day. Actually, no, you know what this is? It was presumed dead, and so the squad had no choice but to leave because I know no man left behind or whatever, but he's presumed dead because he was in a, a batch of trees and then the trees exploded. And you're like, no, Billy, like, we gotta go. And then you leave Billy behind and Billy's like, guys, I'm right here. That's what happened, bro. It wasn't actually that broken. Anyway, what we need to do right now is we need to go ahead and download um, NV Flash and all that stuff. And then I'll show you guys where to go to get the BIOS and all that. As much as I even hate showing their logo on my channel because of that stupid news article they posted a couple weeks ago, Tech Power Up has a video BIOS collection and these are submitted by users and stuff. Users like you and me. And so anyway, what I did was I downloaded um, GPU-Z so that we can verify all the information on this BIOS. Even though the BIOS version on here, which I don't know how well it shows up on screen, but Phil can annotate, 90.17.1C.00.91. Now the BIOS, BIOS version that's listed here is 90.17.1a.00.6a. This is from 2019-2019. So this is what, nine months old. I have no idea which BIOS is newer. So what I'm gonna do right now, because I'm not sure which is newer, I'm gonna go ahead and save this BIOS by clicking the little box right here. Save to file. BIOS reading not supported on this device. Or not, so we won't be saving that BIOS. And then we're gonna have to download a utility called um, NV Flash. And basically NV Flash is just the, the tool that you can use to force BIOS flashing. Now, I'm not doing a tutorial on how to use NV Flash. I'm just telling you the process on how to do this. And the reason why I'm not doing a tutorial on how to use NV Flash is simply because of the fact that you can very easily brick your, your graphics cards by putting the wrong BIOS on there. So for instance, when you have like a reference card, let's say the NVIDIA 2080 Ti reference, and then you've got the EVGA SC Ultra, or XC Ultra, which is based on the same reference PCB, but has a custom BIOS on there with different boost clocks and stuff. You, what a lot of people will do is they'll take those higher boost clock BIOS and flash them onto their regular vanilla cards. The problem is that doesn't always work. You'll get subset mismatch. Uh, you'll get all kinds of device ID mismatches and you've got to override those to say, yes, I know it's not the same, flash it. Well, depending on like back in like the 700 series era, um, there was also different revisions to the actual die itself. So you'd have like A1, B1, stuff like that. And you could put a wrong BIOS on the wrong revision, brick your, your graphics card and never get it to come back. Ask me how I know that. 
How do you know that? Funny you should ask. I actually made a video about it. Now, when we use NVLink, I don't want to have to type in msi.gtx1650.4096.1902192019 rom So I'm just going to rename it to don't die.com. Or dot .rom. .rom. <laughs> don't die. I don't know if that's a real website. I probably wouldn't go there if I were you, just by the sounds of it. All right, so now with NVFlash downloaded and extracted into the same folder as our ROM, you can set the file structure however you want. You have NVFlash 64 and NVFlash. NVFlash is for 32-bit. No one should be running 32-bit in 2019 for any reason whatsoever. And then NVFlash 64 is for 64-bit operating systems. Now you used to be able to, in Windows 10 or Windows 7, like right click and like run command prompt here, but you can't do that crap anymore. So now you need to go over to your start menu and do command and or come on, blah, blah, blah. right click run as administrator if you don't have administrator privileges this is not going to work and then don't die dot rom hey I, I remembered how to do a thing crazy okay update display driver firmware yes to confirm any other key to abort yes what you just heard it do was actually disable the driver, which I forgot to do manually, but fortunately NV Flash will do it for you now. It's now writing the EEPROM. It's now flashing the image to our latest ROM that we put on there, verifying the update. Firmware image has now just broken your system. That's actually somewhat normal. Because the thing is, it's running still off of the previous loaded BIOS until you restart. So when I actually flashed the wrong BIOS on my previous graphics card, I was like, yeah, it worked. And then I restarted the computer and it never came back. In fact, it was so broken that it, the graphics card itself was not even like identifiable to the system. In fact, we tried everything we possibly could to get that EEPROM to rewrite, but it was so broken that even when we would identify graphics cards, it just said VGA, that was it. But it still gave you no picture whatsoever. And then what we did, we did was the old trick of like, have two graphics cards in the system at the same time, boot off the good one, and then NV flash to the second card, because you could tell which card you want to flash to. We showed how to do all that when we did our Titan RTX BIOS upgrades. Um, it just was like no card present. So anyway, let's now do this. Let me shut this down. And we are going to now put our power or our, our graphics cord or display port into the bottom one. So what died obviously was the port. This graphics card is still perfectly fine. And if you were one of those people, I, I didn't see anyone say, Jay, you probably just killed the port. But if you did type that in the thousands of comments that I can't possibly read through, kudos to you. Well, it's still alive, which kind of sucks in a way because we wanted to send this thing off. Where's my blowtorch? All right, guys, thanks for watching. At least today we got to show you some of the troubleshooting methods, also how to reflash the BIOS, and I guess that's what we showed you today. So thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one, where don't ask me how <laughs> we managed to overpressurize the system enough to rip a valve in half. But let's just say we were experimenting with things, things and pressures and- That happened too, by the way. <laughs> so if you guys, <laughs> I can't incriminate myself. We'll see you in the next yeah, one. Yes. <laughs>